decades, drug kingpins made millions trafficking heroin, opium, and cannabis through Thailand. In response, Thailand's laws became tough. So tough, its prisons are bursting at the seams. But there's been an astounding change in policy. Even government ministers are extolling the virtues of cannabis. We have seen that the cannabis product would not only cure illness for people, it could become one of the major incomes for Thai people. Thai state Supporters go even further. As the new drug laws take effect, 101 East investigates whether these promises are hype or reality. It's a quiet afternoon here at Rangsit University in Bangkok. But security is tight. A van carrying half a ton of valuable contraband is about to arrive. There's 500 kilograms of cannabis here, and normally it would go to an incinerator, but today it's going to Thailand's very first medical cannabis research facility. It's the biggest delivery of seized cannabis they've ever received. And a SWAT team is here to make sure every one of these packages reaches its final destination. Little more than a year ago, cannabis was a class 5 drug. Anyone found possessing or using it in Thailand could get up to 10 years in prison. New laws now allow those with permits to cultivate, dispense, and study cannabis. ทำไมทางมหาลัยต้องใช้ของการด้วยล่ะคะเนื่องจากว่าเราได้ทําการวิจัยในเรื่องของการพัฒนาสายพันธุ์แต่ว่าอย่างไรก็ตามเนี่
from allergies to cancer. But many still come hoping for a miracle. คนไข้เข้ามาที่เราเนี่ยทุกคนมีความคาดหวังว่ากัญชาสามารถรักษาให้หายได้ทุกโรคนะคะจะเป็นเอ่อเป็นมะเร็งระยะสุดท้ายอ
Buntoon's claims have not been scientifically proven, and experts warn that cannabis oil dispensed outside of hospitals can be contaminated by pesticides and heavy metals. It's been three days since Apichat has been at the temple. He says he's now able to eat pain-free for the first time since his diagnosis two months ago. Since the new laws came into effect about a year ago, there's been claims that cannabis can not only cure disease, but can also provide a lucrative income. One consulting group estimates the Thai cannabis industry could be worth more than $2 billion by 2024. Politicians campaigned on these promises. Tens of thousands of people were drawn to Thailand's first cannabis festival last year. Exhibitors showed off their plants, oils, and edibles. YouTubers wandered the festival in awe. Even the prime minister is happy to promote the government's new mascot. They call him Dr. Ganja. This change of attitude is apparent in the traditional medicine industry. Almost 3,000 traditional medicine practitioners are certified to prescribe cannabis, compared to just 400 medical doctors. I go to a traditional medicine clinic with the highest stamp of approval from the government. I'm here at the cannabis clinic at the Ministry of Health, and they're saying that patients can come in here and get free cannabis oil if they qualify. So I'm going to go through the process and see if I can take cannabis oil home today. I check in with an app and hand over my Thai ID card for their tracking system. They take my blood pressure and ask about my medical history and my symptoms. I tell them how I've been having difficulty sleeping. With that, the doctor says I qualify and can take three drops of oil a day. She assures me it's not much. In fact, you would need to take half the bottle to feel a strong high. So, I've just received two bottles of cannabis oil. Each has about 100 drops each. Uh, it's been prescribed for my insomnia. <laughs> it took me less than 30 minutes to go through the entire process to get the oil. Just a few years ago, using cannabis, dispensing cannabis, would have been completely illegal. Thailand's Minister of Health explains the government's sudden change of heart. I think Thai people actually were ready for this product long before my party launched this campaign. We heard what Thai people wanted. On the campaign trail, some people in your party are saying you could get up to $2,000 per kilogram of cannabis. Is that realistic? This is typical economic philosophy, demand and supply. People will have to compete in the quality of the products. So someone that comes with good seeds, good technologies, and some kind of uh, research and development will we'll have a, a better opportunity. I ask him how far the laws will go. Recreational use is not the purpose. Our policy is we want 
ill people to have op options in curing themselves. We want another business opportunity for farmers, for industrialists. Thailand's openness towards new laws is tied to the country's deep history with the plant. Traditionally, Thai people used cannabis to treat common ailments and spice up noodle soup. But the plant has been illegal for more than 70 years, and few people know how to grow it anymore. I'm on the road with Jamsuda Nirandong, who recently started a legal cannabis farm but finds it difficult to get reliable information on cultivating a high-quality crop in Thailand. So we're on our way to meet an illegal grower called Daddy Dum. On Kot Tao Island, far from Bangkok, Daddy Dum, whose real name is Aram Limsakun, has been secretly growing cannabis for more than 25 years. He remembers a time when cannabis was commonplace on the island. I was born on the island, which is growing marijuana a lot at the time. Because uh, fishermen, they need some kind of uh, relaxation to go and work in the sea, rough sea, it's very stressed. Yeah, and using cannabis smoking bong, it helped them to stay out in the sea without fear. He too has embraced cannabis's medical properties. He gives out the oils he extracts by leaving stashes at the local kanji shop for those who need it. But earlier this year, he was arrested for growing without a license. That doesn't bother Jom Suda. She's excited to meet him. He shows Jom Suda and I the rooftop terrace where he used to grow his plants before the police took them away. He's now awaiting trial, but he says he's not worried about being sent to prison. <laughs> Jom Suda and Aram get down to business at a local restaurant. She confesses that she's having difficulty with a strain she's working with. Aram is known for perfecting a strain that can perform well in Thailand's humid climate and wants to continue that work. And what, what I try to, to breed out now is, is the strain which it can grow everywhere in Thailand, outside, not indoor. And this should be good enough for medicine. So it's not too expensive for regular people to try and grow? No. <laughs> Weren't you afraid to get arrested? Ah, uh, yeah. I never feel scared or afraid because I never think that it's bad. I'm not uh, kill anyone. I not harm any anyone. A devout Buddhist, 
he gives out his advice and his oils for free. It's those seeking profit who worry him. They start to do business. They start to sell, and then they lost their way. Yeah. Um, this plant is 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 gift from nature. Yeah. People should should learn how to grow, how to use, and how to help other people, not to make money. Yeah. Because if it's to make money is it would be bad uh, to to our soul, our mind. Making money is exactly what many people are banking on. Early investors hope that being the first to break into the market will give them a leg up. Jom Suda and her sister Jom Kwan run Rakjang Farm in Thailand's northeast. They're known for their Japanese melons and Instagram-friendly spots. But now it's one of Thailand's newest legal cannabis farms through a collaboration with a Pai Bed hospital which buys their crop. Jom Kwan gives me a tour. Their farm is well equipped with greenhouses and a legally mandated security system. You have to pass locked doors and dozens of cameras before you can get a glimpse of these seedlings. To abide by the rules, they must keep track of every part of every plant. They admit they still have a lot to learn. Growing cannabis also needs money and connections most farmers don't have. Jom Suda says some people questioned their background. They are trying their best to keep costs down by making their own equipment and using solar power. It's unclear if they'll ever turn a profit. But they are ambitious. I'm on my way to meet Tom Kruasopon, a multimillionaire and big time investor. He's a champion of the new laws. You, you, you Google Mr. Weed Thailand for some ungodly reason, my face pops up. He says, while cannabis products can make big money, promises that it will lift farmers out of poverty are unrealistic. What do you tell the Thai farmers now? Don't grow. Don't grow. Even if the rules and regulations are clear, you gotta ask yourself, who am I selling the products to? I feel bad for a lot of people that are being lied to, right? Because everybody wants, it's like, it's like the gold rush. Right, everybody went in and says, gee, let's go dig for gold. And they end up with a lot of rocks. Is it just politics? Legally, on a medical part, we kept the promise. If you really need it, you can come and get it for free. In regard to the economics of it, I think we're still a little weak on that. Is it all politics? What in life isn't? It's been a month since we met Apichat and Wasana at the temple. I check in on them. Hello. 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 
ตอนนี้ก็กินข้าวได้นะเดินเดินไปไหนได้นะเดินก็สะดวกขึ้นกินข้าวก็กินได้ปกติแค่กินสามมื้อนะ He tells me he's gained three kilograms. He even cracks a smile when I ask if the oil makes him high. They don't know if the cancer is gone. But like so many involved with the cannabis industry in Thailand, they are hopeful.